Okay, let's talk about cover crops, and it doesn't matter if it's orchards, veg crop production, or flower crop production. The principles and practices are about the same. In this instance, we're referring to orchards. Uh, cover crops and compost are your two principal tools for ramping up soil biology, ramping up organic matter, and the figures go something like with every one half percent increase in organic matter you get about 15 to 20 percent more nutrients across the board available. It's a good thing, they're good things. Let's look at cover crops. Uh, this is a fall seeded cover crop of just bell beans straight up. We use a number of different combinations. Sometimes we singulate, as we are here uh, with the bell beans. Sometimes, as we've shown previously in the orchard alleys, singulate with uh, an annual ryegrass. Sometimes we mix it up and combine what we call BVOP, bell beans, vetch, oats, and peas. But here we have a beautiful stand, about chest high, of bell beans, Vicia faba, a nitrogen-fixing legume. Gives you all kinds of biomass and when it starts to flower is attractive to pollinators and beneficial insects. Although note, the flowering stage indicates time to turn this in. On a garden scale, we simply what I call drop and chop with a machete, a weed whip, or a spade. We hit the cover crop at the base, drop it on the ground, chop it up into small pieces, and mulch over. On a field scale, you would more than likely flail mow it and then disk it in, irrigate, wait a period of time uh, to plant until there's total rot down of the vegetative matter. The bell bean fixes uh, nitrogen, so the more open, porous, the better the aggregation or structure of the soil. That means you have more pore space, the spaces between the individual solid particles. That means there can be more air in your soil, and it is the nitrogen from our atmosphere in the soil that the microbes, principally bacteria, fix into an available form of nitrogen. Here you see the presence of nitrogen fixing nodules. Actually, it is within the nodules that the bacteria, genus Rhizobium, fix nitrogen from the soil air. A pink tinge to them even better, that means effective nitrogen fixation. So we've got both here. Here we have a super robust stand of mustard as a cover crop. Mustard, I might add, used to be the go-to cover crop for California orchards. It's not much used these days, but you might consider using it. Now, caveat emptor, buyer beware. Do not let your mustard go to seed, particularly in an annual veg crop uh, system. What's that old New England adage? One year of seeding, seven years of weeding. In an orchard, you still don't want a lot of weed pressure, but it's not as bad as in a veg crop situation. I've actually exercised this strategy previously on a garden scale with fruit trees, which is to grow a mustard cover crop. Let it seed, knock it down, leave it on the ground as a surface mulch. In the fall, when the soils cool down and the rains start to come, the seeds come up, and so you have a perpetual turnover of a cover crop without having to work the soil so much. Works good. Not sure I would recommend it on a field scale, but it works good on a garden scale. Okay, to the mustard, as you see, it is a biomass producer. This is a little past the stage you would want to turn it in. Again, greener, more succulent, makes for easier both break down and turn in. But here we have a marvelous stand, and you will see if you stand here, quite a few species of native and non-native pollinators. There's the very utilitarian honeybee, European honeybee, Apis mellifera, but there are a number of solitary bees, including a couple species of bumblebees. My favorite is the yellow-faced bumblebee. Uh, and if you come in the afternoon, it seems more about four or five o'clock in the afternoon, there'll be a little swarm of tiny things. And these tiny things are, by research, parasitic wasps that are very beneficial in terms of controlling detrimental insects. So a stand of mustard, 
coming into bloom, time to drop and chop and turn it in before it seeds. But in the meantime, we gain the dividend of attracting uh, the three Ps, pollinators, again, native and non-native, predators and parasitoids, which is just fancy talk for beneficial insects. Let's talk a little bit about the root nature of mustard. Doesn't have much of a root system compared to say the grass with a marvelous rug of fibrous roots, but what it has is a tap root. Again, often called a bio drill. Now I broke this off, but it probably went down another foot or so. And if you leave this in uh, to maturation, it can have a considerable effect at breaking up compacted soils, particularly at depth. So good soil practices cumulatively give you the ability to fix more nitrogen with your cover crops. Another thing to note is the seeding density. When I first started at this game 40 something years ago, the recommendation was 50 pounds of bell beans or whatever your cover crop is per acre. The recommendation these days is 200 pounds or more per acre in parentheses if you can afford it. The ideas here are that the competition suppresses weeds and also that if you have competition the legume will fix more nitrogen. There's a term about legumes that says they're lazy that is if your soil is halfway good and they don't need to expend the energy they won't fix nitrogen. By creating some competition with seeding density you get them to work a little harder. This is another example of harnessing biology working smart not so hard. Let's drill down a little more on density of your stand of cover crop, a higher seeding rate. A higher seeding weight will suppress weeds, that is the weeds that would grow during the time the cover crop is growing, in this case fall, winter, early spring, not next summer's amaranth weeds, but still a good thing. Uh, a higher density suppresses weeds. Look here where there's a nice thick stand of these bell beans, virtually no weeds. And if we look down here, where there's a little bit of a shy stand of uh, bell beans, quite a luxuriant stand of weeds. Again, additionally, a thick stand of bell beans or vetch or any legume you would choose to use forces the bell bean to quote unquote work harder and fix more nitrogen. Um, you want to think about turning in your cover crop at the ideal stage and this is almost the ideal stage just as the legume is starting to come into flower while the tips are still extremely lush and succulent and the bases haven't got too woody uh, and carbonaceous. This simply facilitates chop up, drop down, turn in. Hey there, uh, Darrell Wong here, Research Lands Manager at the UC Santa Cruz Center for Agroecology. Uh, I'm here today to talk about our grain drill. Um, this is, I'd say, one of the more important tools for organic growers um, because it allows us to be really kind of precise and creative with the cover crops that we sow. Um, so we use it mainly, again, for cover crops. These will happen mostly in the winter, but sometimes in the summer. Um, so right now, um, it's, uh, we're at kind of the end of fall, pretty close to winter. Um, we had a, a break in the weather um, and are about to get some rain, so we're gonna put some cover crop in the ground here. Um, we're in our orchards, so in our stone fruits, and we're gonna um, put in some vetch seed. Um, today we're seeding purple vetch. Um, and yeah, so I just wanna talk you through how the seeder works. So ours is a pretty small seeder. It fits right behind our tractor, so it's a, yeah, um, about seven feet, um, six or seven feet. Um, this up here is the hopper. I'm gonna put all the seed um, into here. Uh, so this can hold up to, you know, probably about 300 pounds of seed. I'm just gonna be putting in about 40 pounds for this sowing. Um, that seed will spread along the bottom of the hopper here. And then 
Below this, there are all these drops that come out of the bottom of the hopper. So there's 13 individual drops that come out of the bottom of the hopper. We determine how fast the seed runs out by two things. One is how wide the opening is. Um, and we can adjust that uh, on the side. Um, and then two, there's a gear ratio that we can adjust some gears uh, in terms of how fast this is moving on the ground, how quickly this rod in the center spins. And the combination of those two things helps us determine how much seed we're gonna drop. Um, right now we're gonna go with a higher seeding rate, you know, higher than most people would ever recommend, you know, upwards of probably 140, 150 pounds per acre. Um, but it's something we like to do really for weed suppression out here. So these drops, again, 13 different drops, they're spaced about seven and a half inches apart. So it comes down this chute here, um, drops out through this double disc opener. So these double disc openers, two discs that um, come together to a point. And these are really important for the grain drill because what that does is it slices a V into the soil. And if there's any residue or any trash on the surface, it'll cut right through that, uh, make a little opening ditch. The seed will fall into that. And then this tamp wheel on the back um, just pushes soil on top of that seed so we get that good seed soil contact, which will get us good germination. We set depth um, by some of these spring adjustments for tension on the, um, on the tamp wheel that will restrict um, somewhat how high the, the, the drill will go. Um, and that's in combination with these kind of set springs here that again are kind of adjusting the tension, the downward tension. But most of the cover crop seed that we sow, especially the stuff in the winter time is just so hardy. You know, you could put it two inches down or you could put it five inches down and the stuff would come up um, uh, is what we found. So that's pretty much it. Um, and then we just go ahead and, and we drive. Um, and it's one of the most simple implements I think on a farm. Um, they're pretty ubiquitous across the country. And like I said, it's one of the most important tools on the organic farm. Okay, so here's our seed. This is a 50 pound bag. So I'm gonna put in, you know, maybe half of it, somewhere around 25 pounds. And once it's in the hopper, I'll make sure to spread it out. So it gets evenly distributed and none of my drops are empty when I'm driving. <laughs>